and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to uh, the episode two of our webinar, uh, which is designed specifically for students aspiring to build a career in the coming years. And uh, I welcome the panel. Uh, I welcome all the students as well. Uh, before we get into uh, having interactions with the students um, and, and our panel, let me quickly introduce our panelists. Um, we have Professor Bhushan. Uh, sir, welcome back to episode two as well. Uh, Professor Bhushan is an expert uh, from the industry. Um, he was a vice president of ABB before moving to Acharya, uh, I think, a couple of decades uh, ago. And uh, has, comes with a lot of uh, experience, and his, his expertise in Acharya is specifically placement. So a lot of students would have questions to Mr. Bhushan. Uh, let me quickly also introduce you to Professor Devrajaya. Um, Devrajaya Hi. is a professional mechanical engineer. And uh, he would be answering your questions related to uh, his uh, subject uh, expertise. Um, Professor Arun. Um, Arun is from the computer science background. And as all the students there, software engineers, who are wanting to ask questions to Arun, please mention your questions specifically to Arun. And he will be there to help you out. Uh, let me also introduce uh, Professor Bhagirathi. Um, uh, she's an expert in the area of mechatronics. Uh, Professor Sunita, uh, uh, expert from biotechnology, and we also have Professor Rajeshwari, uh, who is uh, the head of the Department for Electronics and Communication at Acharya Institute of Technology, and also an expert from the field of um, uh, electronics and communication. Um, before we uh, start the discussion um, and start, start taking questions uh, from the students and give it to the panel, uh, let me tell all the students and parents who have logged in already. Uh, you will see a chat option or a question option on the right hand side of your screen where you can uh, write in your questions. I will take in the questions and ask the panel for you for them to answer you. Uh, please do start sending in your questions so that we pick out the best questions and start answering them so that they help you in identifying a, a good career for yourselves. But before uh, taking the students' question, let me bring in um, Professor Bhushan. Um, so specifically, uh, since today's audience are students who are looking at building a career in engineering, um, they have a lot of questions in understanding what are the career prospects going to be in the field of engineering, because the industry specifically is down, and the economics is down, and people are worried uh, whether it would be, what would be the right option for uh, for them to get into at such a scenario would you recommend as an expert of uh, placements to be looking at engineering as a career option thank you vishesh wonderful question and first of all welcome to all the millennials who are gathering here along with for the decade of the millennials this particular decade 2020 to 2030 is going to be the decade of millennials and it has posed a good amount of problems and whenever there are problems engineers are supposed to be there to solve the problems the mankind as and when it faces lots of problems and those particular problems are to be resolved each problem requires an engineering solution and this indeed is an opportunity to make sure that a student who would like to make a career in engineering has to get into that one thing of course each one of us have our own passion yeah, each one of us would like to be somebody over a period of time and i would say those who are interested to solve problems and use the science which they have learned from the basics of nursery until the uh, 12th standard and if those people would like to go in for uh, a solution or contributing for the mankind and be contented with that particular portion of relaxing at the night saying that i have done something for the mankind today then engineering is a wonderful option and today there are plenty of opportunities plenty of placements and today just we completed one session of placements completely online and uh, recorded a good number of placements for our students and then we are back here into this particular room so i would uh, welcome those aspirants who are interested to solve problems for the benefit of the mankind are welcome to join engineering thank you professor boshan that is a, that is an insight i think most of the engineering students are actually wanting to hear and probably would uh, move forward to the industry taking shape in that direction the next quest, uh, panelist that I want to uh, bring in uh, would be uh, Professor Devrajaya, who is also a dean academic. Uh, so I think this could not would have been a better question to ask, sir. What are the academic challenges in front of engineering students? I mean, as 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 a 
dean of academics and students aspiring uh, engineering program what do you think could be the academic challenges in front of engineering aspirants yeah, uh, good evening mr vishesh and uh, the panelists and i welcome all the aspirant uh, engineering students and their parents yeah uh, thanks for giving me an opportunity to speak and uh, to be a panelist in this uh, uh, webinar yeah i would like to uh, opine like this challenges were there uh, even before corona and will be continue uh, will continue to exist even after corona but challenges are only in a different shape in front of us as uh, mr bhushan uh, rightly pointed out yeah uh, we shall not treat this as a um, the threat or uh, something like that it is in fact opening us a, a plethora of opportunities uh, but uh, what what i urge to for students is students should uh, whichever branch or discipline you opt for you know you should chase your dreams and you should uh, uh, you know work very hard and things are not going to be uh, difficult for you as uh, as uh, there is a saying in english you know like uh, uh, it is better to sweat in the practice than to bleed in the battle if you wisely use your next four years it is going to be wonderful for your career that that's what i want to assure you uh, yeah there are openings uh, ag there is ag again another saying in english when all doors closes another door opens yes you know that uh, we have a bright future many companies and uh, Uh, many uh, you know uh, industries are coming to india definitely you have a bright future and please do remember that you have four more years by the time you complete your engineering by that time things will be very clear and bright uh, that's it mr vishesh that's my this one thank you professor I, i'm sure uh, uh, it was well put and i think students do understand the kind of effort that is required by them to build a successful um, you know successful career in the engineering profession Uh, let me quickly bring in um, uh, Professor Bagirathi, who is an expert of mechatronics. Now, uh, students do have a lot of questions when it comes to mechatronics because they they're hearing probably from the last few years about mechatronics and things like that. Um, as a layman, I would like to know what do usually mechatronics uh, students go on to do after their graduation? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Vishesh, for the question. and i welcome all the aspirants and the parents uh, for this webinar uh, so before answering to this question what the grads are going to do after the completion so let me just tell you what exactly is a mechatronics so most of the aspirants i guess uh, they will be having the question i guess so i can say that uh, mechatronics city is in heartbeat of the most of the developed nations so uh, the field of mechatronics it has expanded by leaps and bounds and uh, has an undefined scope in an automation and manufacturing industry as we all know that uh, in the today's uh, almost all the industries are getting automated to improve on their productive growth so mechatronics specialists or the mechatronics grads are in uh, high demand so what what exactly is a mechatronics uh, it is an a multidisciplinary course or an integrated course which focuses on the engineering of electrical mechanical components along with uh, robotics automation uh, control system and today's booming technology the computer technology that is the ai and the ml so since uh, i just mentioned that mechatronics uh, they it is an integrated course they do talk in both the language of electrical as well as the mechanical so they fit into multidisciplinary engineering courses so they can actually develop a solution to an industrial problem uh, with the use of the mechanical electronics and the computer technology they can design a, a smart and intelligent system which can control by the computer and uh, we are major in the robotics so they students can actually design and develop and maintain the robots for so many applications starting from your industrial application from a home application as well as a, a medical field a surveillance a defense application and the aviation packaging manufacturing they also can integrate all this automation process on an iot platform so i can say that a uh, uh, mechatronics specialist or a mechatronics grads so they can actually fit into almost all the fields 
Thank you, ma'am. Th that's uh, a very good insight okay. that you have given to students to understand what mechatronics is all about. Uh, now, let me quickly uh, bring in uh, Professor Rajeshwari. Um, yeah. Ma'am, uh, electronics and communication has been uh, one of the evergreen branches in the field of engineering. Um, during these uh, times of COVID and how the industry is going to uh, uh, develop in this particular spectrum, what do you think will be the scope for electronics engineers? Yeah, thank you, Vishesh, and it's wonderful. Uh, it's a nice question. Uh, in my opinion, I would like to see COVID-19 in a positive way. Uh, it's 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 given up uh, it's given up way for uh, the healthcare sector uh, healthcare sector which has which will come to the uh, uh, surface to the human mankind and not only to the human mankind it will uh, give uh, opportunity to all our budding engineers tomorrow to design uh, biomedical devices solutions for uh, IT into healthcare. Uh, it, 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 it'll be a it'll be a wide spectrum of opportunities for me to get into uh, intelligent uh, healthcare systems manufacturing sector. Uh, I get into a large amount of uh, uh, intelligent hardware, which is required at this state of time. Not only in the healthcare sector, it's also into the economical uh, revamp with uh, uh, the uh, intelligent systems which will come into the picture. It will be the chip technology into uh, uh, chip technology, be it uh, the uh, sensors based or uh, getting into the biomems into humankind for the healthcare. Not only this, uh, I look at uh, uh, this COVID uh, situation also positively into uh, getting into the uh, manufacturing sector uh, to a wide uh, variety. For example, uh, let me talk about um, uh, building uh, devices for um, 5G. Uh, talking uh, talking in terms of 5G uh, related to not only communications, it's related to telemedicine, it is related to 5G in connecting the whole globe with uh, trillions of devices. Uh, I see a wide spectrum of uh, uh, vertical one, it's uh, chip technology, vertical two, healthcare devices, vertical three, intelligent systems. And not only that, I see a wide spectrum into IT applications along with the hardware also. This is my view. Uh, if I look at the current scenario of uh, COVID and post COVID. Thank you, ma'am. I think you have given so many Vishesh? opportunities. Yes, yes. Thank you so Hello? much. And I think, ma'am, I can hear you. Thank you. That was uh, Professor Rajesh giving you right. Uh, uh, Vishesh, was it clear? Yes, it was loud and clear. Thank you so much. Uh, let me now quickly bring in uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Sunita, uh, who is the yeah. expert in biotechnology here. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I think everybody is talking about technology in the physical sense. When it comes to nature, when it comes to using biotechnology for development of mankind and and uh, economy uh, Vishesh, around Vishesh, us. Vishesh, could you get me? Vishesh, yes, could you get me? I could. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah, thank you. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sunita, uh, my question yeah, to you is, uh, how do you think uh, biotechnology is going to um, uh, probably uh, shape our economy and the industry in the coming days? How is it? How is the demand going to be? Yeah. Thank you, Vishesh, and uh, good evening to uh, panelists and uh, aspirants and parents who are there in the webinar. Yeah, biotechnology is one of the field, uh, I mean, in the engineering, it is the um, discipline we work with living organisms and uh, living systems uh, to develop the products. It's a very clear one. And it is the uh, discipline, it fits to the, it's very flexible and fits to the other multidisciplinary uh, areas. So obviously, as we see here, uh, I mean, uh, the, the one day, current status of the issue is uh, COVID-19. See, this itself is uh, showing the economy. It is so much, it is down, and we are not able to find the solutions for the COVID even after the passing of six months. So as a high demand of the biotechnologist uh, uh, engineers is needed, and uh, because uh, here it is, uh, uh, regarding to the um, the solutions for the current issue, I mean, uh, regarding to the uh, COVID-19, if you take the example, so all globe, it is working on towards this. 
I think uh, the research is still need to expand exponentially in this area. So the uh, freshers actually before COVID, we need the experienced people. But after COVID, I think we need the biotech engineers. The freshers also we require. This is the the scenario has come like this. So uh, this is the field which gives connect to the uh, the economy very directly because uh, any inventions we do and it is probably it will shoot up to the exponential way to the economy and uh, we are all working towards to this and recently our uh, biochin where we have the myo, uh, mou with the people with the industry people they come out with a uh, uh, detective kit for the uh, covid and uh, currently we are also working on some of the projects related to the covid based and uh, uh, see and the, even the data analytic part of the covid we are also working on this projects so if you looking at all these scenarios i think high demand is there for the inventions in the biotechnology because he, the life science with the technology we have uh, in this discipline and it helps us the human to live a healthy and enhance the scientific as um, aspire of the country and it is also this discipline is relates to the all living creatures of the uh, on the on the globe on the earth that is it may be a animal uh, uh, animal technology i mean animal plant human even we work on the living organisms so i think uh, i feel uh, this is the field which is directly um, uh, proportional to the economy of the country thank you Thank you, Professor Sunita. That was, I think, a, a detailed insight into how biotechnology is going to take shape. Let me now uh, quickly yeah. uh, bring in Professor Arun. Uh, Professor Arun, you are an expert in the field of computer science and IT. Um, well, how do you think that computer science and IT is going to shape up in the coming uh, coming days? Is it a good choice, career choice to have in the next four years? Thank you, Vishesh, uh, for me, uh, having me here as a panel member. Uh, now. Computer science is basically a wide field with a lot of opportunities for all the aspirants. It's one of the most reliable career choice made by the youngsters till date and in future also. See, now we are in an era where we are talking about digital India. So that means that we have to go for digitization, be it e-commerce, travel, education, finance, logistics, payments. Just if we roll back 10 years or 15 years, See, uh, we were uh, standing in a queue where uh, in front of a bank to make the payments. Now, where are we now? We are in an era where in a fraction of a second, we scan the QR code and the payments are done. So where are we are uh, where we are currently? We are in that era where within a fraction of a second using the software, we are able to do the things like this. No. Now, what we basically do uh, to the students of computer science, we basically teach them the real how to solve the real life problems. Uh, think about a scenario 15 years back or 10 years back. Uh, was it a possible? Was it possible for us to conduct a webinar like this? No, right? We are having 500 students, thousand students sitting all of, across the globe. Now we are able to connect in a one platform. So where is that application is coming from? It is coming from the software, right? So who is that person who is building that software? Obviously, our computer science students, right? So if I have to tell, uh, there are basically, I feel that there are five sectors with a great opportunity as a computer science graduate. Uh, one is software development. Uh, second is graphic designers, software testing. Uh, fourth is information security and system analyst. Yeah, we do have web development, mobile development, data science. All these things are part of your software development only. So in nutshell, we have to see that uh, till date, the computer science is a good place. And down the line also, it will be a good place to live in an era where we are in a digitized world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, insight. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of craze going around behind computer science. I think uh, uh, students now probably understand what all computer science students can contribute to, uh, especially in the area of interdepartment skills or interdisciplinary skills where students can come in and probably support uh, electronics, mechatronics, me me mechanical automobile. 
um, talking about automobile. Um, so uh, uh, let me bring in Professor Bhushan. But before I ask the question, all the students and parents who have logged in, uh, the questions tab is now open for your questions. Please look at towards the right hand side of your panel. You will see on your control panel uh, a button saying questions. Please click on that. Type in your questions. Please do mention your name so that um, if you have a specific uh, a panelist that you want me to ask the question to, uh, you could put it on onto the chat and then I'll ask the question. Uh, let me now quickly bring in Professor Bhushan. There is a very interesting question. Uh, this is uh, well uh, with regards to um, the placement sector. Now, uh, the question is the automobile industry took a hit even before the lockdown. In this scenario, what are the scopes for students who offer automobile engineering? I think that's a very, very interesting question, Professor Boshin. Thank you very much. Anything in this world which goes down has to come up. That is the first fact. Today, over a period of time, in the last one, one and a half years, due to certain policies, the automobile industry took a hit. The policies basically were the ones which were not promoting that particular market and people didn't buy the automobiles which are required basically because they were not really required during that particular period of time and uh, now the scenario has completely changed all of us should remember one thing covid is going to stay with us for nearly around 12 months 18 months 24 months or maybe some more time and it is going to stay in different forms and if not this pandemic some other pandemic or some other nature of problem is going to be there and we need to learn to be in within so each of the city, which is basically like Bangalore, or for that matter, you take uh, cities like Bombay, you have seen the suffering which is going on in Mumbai. Each of these particular cities are going to shift. The entire process is going to shift to smaller cities, smaller towns, and then the development is going to occur in those particular kind of cities. So there will be automatic requirement of the automobiles which will come up. Imagine the amount of boost which has been given for the MSMEs and then the 20 lakh crore package which has been opened up for the industries and the new labor laws which are coming up from all the corners of the country and each state there are going to be more and more jobs and there are going to be more and more industries which are going to rejuvenate themselves and start supplying we would require a hell of a lot of prime movers hell of a lot of trucks tractors or for that matter even other uh, vehicles which would be required for movement of people and then there will be a boom which will come back if you ask me my personal opinion you should today invest in the automobile sector instead of investing in any other sector. So the people who invest in the automobile sector today are the ones who are going to reap the benefit because that is the most down market today and the one which is going to give you the best returns is going to be in the automobile. So I would uh, also suggest that the new designs which are going to come, you are aware that challenges which each one of the car or the vehicles which we face, that's, uh, Today, there are certain new designs which are going to come to accommodate the people in order to take care of the safety measure related to COVID also. Those are also going to come. There will be a lot of change in the cabin structure of the vehicles where we are going to sit. The buses are going to be COVID compliant. So there could be cabins which could be allowing having a window, 30 people who are going to sit, but each of them having their own airspace at the same time isolated from the rest of the people. Sleeping coaches will also come in their own design so that people are once once they are in, then they are going to work and then going to stay in their own place. So these are the changes which are going to come in each of this particular industry. Take the mining vehicles which are going to come up, the ex excavators or those particular type of equipment. Today, India has opened up the mining sector again. 500 big licenses are going to be very shortly removed, uh, will be auctioned over a period of time. And you can imagine the number of vehicles which would be required in each of this industry. I would request those students who are really interested in automobile and thought that there is a slump due to which we would not like to take that. I would invite, if you have a passion to be an automobile engineer, get into it today. There is no issue. And uh, in fact, you are going to see the best of the opportunities throughout the world, not just here. But remember, you cannot compete only in India. You will be competing in the whole world and the opportunities are going to be across the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Bhushan. Um, now, uh, let me bring in uh, Professor Rajeshwari, if you can hear me. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a very interesting you. question. Uh, what does introduction of 5G uh, mean to the communication sector? Okay, uh, good. 5G, uh, uh, Vishesh, it's a nice question for the uh, students who are really uh, looking beyond uh, the existing 2G, 3G. Fine. Uh, 5G uh, allows me to connect uh, trillions of uh, devices at a high speed with a good data rate. 
uh, this technology is uh, not only going to uh, connect me uh, across the globe with the uh, highest data rate, but with low attenuation levels. And uh, we have seen uh, uh, the IoT sector uh, within 2020, uh, and now it's 2020, within another two years, we'll be seeing uh, trillions of devices across the globe connected. And for this uh, connectivity, uh, the current 3G and the 4G, the data rate and the uh, uh, attenuation levels are not suitable so uh, i need to shift a drastic shift from the 3g sector to a 5g sector and to the lte now this 5g industry and the lte in industry uh, will give me a very good uh, opportunity for all the engineers be it the electronics engineer the computer science engineers or the mechatronics engineers to get into for uh, uh, developing uh, the uh, uh, protocols, developing the hardwares, developing the uh, uh, IoT automation levels. I see a, a very good uh, spectrum of opportunities with this 5G boom. Basically, 5G is to connect uh, trillions of devices across the globe with high data rate and high, uh, sorry, low uh, attenuation levels. This is what uh, is my uh, uh, view of 5G. And I see 5G at a very, very positive level. And we have Thank seen you. industries, we have seen industries which have already come into, be it Cisco, be it Ericsson, uh, be it Tata Alexi. We have seen the boom of 5G in these sectors and slowly India also is making a big way. But we need to put in our uh, uh, Indian economy also together for this 5G. This is what I look at, at. look at 5G. Uh, true, I think uh, I agree with uh, Professor Rajeshwari here. I think uh, we need yeah. technology to move us forward so that the economy also grows along with us. And I think if that form of investment could come in terms of the communication sector with better, better broadbands and things like that. Because the education uh, sector itself is going on a paradigm shift. Uh, students from classrooms yes. are now virtually sitting and attending and listening to classes. I think 5G can help in bring in that um, you know uh, infrastructure that the country requires where People from every part, every corner of the world is able to connect to the experts uh, like us, uh, the panels that we're having today. Uh, now, quickly, uh, yes. let me move on to the next question. Uh, the next question is to Professor Arun. Arun, it's a very, very interesting question. Uh, it says, uh, is artificial intelligence da dangerous uh, to human civilization? Uh, that's interesting. What is your take on it, Professor Arun? Mike, Mike, Mike. He's not even looking. Vishesh, shall I take this question? Uh, Professor Arun, I think your mic uh, needs to be enabled. We're not able to hear you uh, before you answer the question. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, Vishesh. Yeah. Uh, fine, uh, definitely I say it's not at all dangerous to the human civilization, you know, uh, this AI, ML, all these are the buzzwords what we are hearing. Now, what we do basically in AI, this AI refers to the simulation of human brain uh, that functions by machines, you know. So obviously, this is achieved through a concept of artificial neural network. So that shows the human intelligence. Now, obvious uh, that there is no way this will become a dangerous to human civilization. It will definitely help the human civilizations to achieve greater things in their life. Thank you, Arun. Uh, the next question is uh, to Devrajaya, uh, sir. So the automotive industry has taken a, a, a lot of development recently. There's a question from a student who wants to know, how is the academics getting aligned to the latest technology in automobiles, especially electric vehicles and self-driven cars? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Vishesh. It's a very opt, opt question uh, in these times. Uh, besides uh, the conventional automobiles and the latest developments, as Mr. Bhushan rightly mentioned, uh, slowly, uh, the shift uh, we are we are witnessing a shift towards electric vehicles uh, because of its because of their obvious uh, benefits over the conventional vehicles. They are uh, economy uh, uh, environmental friendly. They, they are pollution free, and uh, even running cost is uh, very less when compared to uh, uh, conventional automobiles. Uh, 
yes electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles play a pivotal role in the future uh, of course yes uh, we uh, as an engineering college or uh, engineering academics is uh, accommodating uh, a wide range of uh, courses where wide range of programs as far as electric vehicles and their uh, technological aspects are concerned and we are also uh, undertaking several uh, project works we are working with industry to develop many uh, technological aspects about uh, the uh, power supply aspects to uh, electric vehicles and uh, the dynamics thereof yeah, uh, definitely academics is uh, looking into uh, shift from conventional to the latest technologies uh, to accommodate uh, the necessary uh, required shift thank you mr vishesh Thank you, sir. Um, I think, uh, uh, as Mr. Bhushan also mentioned earlier, and as you put it now, automotive industry is something that is going to be growing rapidly, and the integration of interdisciplinary. I, I, I know that I'm using this word quite frequently, but I think the students need to understand that engineering um, itself is on a uh, is on a on a verge of development uh, into into the interdisciplinary levels, where students would be required to have skills from interdepartments to be a, a an engineer of the future and i think the way automotive industry is heading to where it is uh, imbibing computer uh, technology information technology uh, artificial intelligence a uh, lot of uh, electric and electronics uh, coming into the cars i think that's going to be a, a very interesting area for students to uh, you know work um let me go on to the next question but before i mention the next question students and parents who are using mobile phones your questions tab is at the bottom of your screen and people who are using desktops you can notice that your questions are on the right hand side of your window so please do ask your questions there are a lot of questions coming in we are looking at more interesting questions to take up so that everybody part taking part is benefited out of it now coming back to professor rajeshwari um there's a student who wants to know how an electrical engineer can explore their career in regards to COVID-19 scenario, which will be the best field of work? I know you are from electronics, but the student specifically wants me to ask yeah, you yeah. this question. Okay, I, I'll take it up. Uh, I'll take it up, Vishesh. Uh, uh, Vishesh, uh, see, uh, uh, post uh, pre-COVID, uh, before uh, uh, Jan uh, 2020, and post covid i don't see uh, i don't see a drastic difference uh, in the opportunities i state like this an electrical engineer today if he pursues his degree he can see his opportunity as a career in um, uh, automotive vehicles uh, because uh, we have seen selfless cars self uh, uh, sorry self driven cars and we have seen how the automotive industry has boomed up be it uh, tesla to the nano in india right uh, uh, apart from this, post-COVID, uh, we see uh, uh, most of the, uh, if you look at the COVID situation now, we have seen the hospitals with all the control panels in the ICUs, the control panels in the uh, energy sectors, the control panels with the complete hospital or the control panels in the administrative blocks. All these are now the intelligent control panels, which controls, uh, be it the uh, ventilator supply, be it the uh, complete automation, all these power managements are intelligent now. There is a wide opportunity for the electrical engineers to get into the sector of control applications. We have also seen uh, intelligent systems in uh, economic handling of the crisis now. We have seen um, uh, the complete uh, sector of uh, device developments with the control applications. And the control applications are intelligent. So I see uh, uh, a good uh, opportunity for the electrical engineers also. And uh, Vishesh, uh, I have one answer, one, one answer to this question also. Let us not view engineering henceforth as electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or civil engineering or computer science. It's a multidisciplinary approach. I require, a, uh, I require an app, I require a hardware, I require a control, I require a mechanical instrument. I require all of them put together and that is engineering today. And I put forth this vocally to all our uh, aspirant uh, engineering students further ma'am yes, i yes, couldn't yes. agree with you better i think um, students need to understand that the future of yes. uh, engineering technology i mean whatever they want to be studying is going to be interdisciplinary this word is going to be repeated for i think a couple of decades more because that is where we are heading to i think this is a point of debate i would want to uh, bring in all the panelists before we get into the next question 
um, uh, uh, we look at uh, interdisciplinary now um, as a subject that we choose. But I think there are a lot of aspects to it. Um, uh, quickly, let me bring in uh, Professor Bhagirathi, who uh, actually heads a department which is interdisciplinary at the undergraduate level itself. Now, I'm sure there are students who would want to choose an alternative engineering program and want to specialize in the area of robotics or artificial intelligence at their master's level. Now, um, in, in taking in continuation to what uh, Professor Rajeshri was mentioning, uh, do you see a major difference where a student of or a uh, interdisciplinary skill at the graduate level or would you uh, advise it's i mean tell the student it's fine to do it at the undergraduate level and probably continue into another totally interdisciplinary level at the postgraduate level i hope you got got my question yeah yeah uh thank you vishish for the question uh so according to me i guess the the students who want to pursue or uh, take up their career in the interdisciplinary like uh, robotics or automation so they can actually start with the uh, graduates level itself. So if they want to take up their uh, post graduation in the uh, interdisciplinary courses, but still, yes, they can. Uh, a, graduation, uh, a graduate who is having uh, electronics engineering or electrical or a mechanical, he also can get into an interdisciplinary course. But in a, at the graduation level, the basics, whatever is required for them to uh, get uh, the knowledge uh, in their post graduation. I guess they are going to get all the basic things in the uh, UG level than a PG level. So, uh, a student or any aspirant who has finished their engineering, even in other core branches, can also can look into uh, interdisciplinary in their post graduates level. But for them, I guess uh, they may have to again look into the other uh, 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 departments as well, other courses as well. So, for example, if they take up an uh, mechatronics or an robotics specialization in the post graduation, say for example, a mechanical student, uh, graduate level he has done his view uh, uh, mechanical, whereas he would like to take up a uh, robotics in his post graduation. But for him, I guess since he is from my only mechanical background, he will be knowing more of the mechanical aspects of it. So whereas in uh, other courses in the mechatronics, for example, he would have already learned even the electronics aspects also, the automation aspect also, and even the controlling what we require, uh, the IOTs or the AI and ML, all those things, the sound knowledge or the basic knowledge he will be having. So, Taking up a mechanical and taking up a mechatronics or interdisciplinary course in the PG, I guess uh, it is up to the student's capability. But I think that's they may well have put. to agree. Yes. agree that uh, uh, interdisciplinary is a way forward, and I think students way have the option than, of yes, graduate level as well as the postgraduate level where they can mix and match. I think they can build their careers. True. I think um, so, I would like to add one more point here, sir. Uh, any uh, mechatronics graduates, uh, graduates who has taken their uh, uh, UG level, they can actually get into any other field. Like a mechanic can actually get into a post graduation level in a me mechanical, or they can actually get into an electronics or an embedded system, or they can also go into a machine learning or an IoT or a cloud computing. Whereas uh, BTEC with uh, ML or AI, and the mechanical so if they take up the pg i guess uh, a little uh, the ground based knowledge will be missing for them perfect i mean um, i think today uh, the academics is also becoming so flexible with in terms of acceptance of students from other disciplines to get into the postgraduate level um, let me quickly bring in professor bhushan as well as professor uh, devra jaya because there is exactly same questions but addressed to two different people what is the uh, scope of aeronautical engineering post uh, the COVID. So, uh, and the second aspect is, I mean, second question is also exactly the same, but is addressed to Deva Jaya. So, uh, let me bring in Professor Bhushan first. Uh, sir, what are your thoughts on aeronautical engineering uh, post uh, the lockdown? Well, the COVID situation, of course, everybody knows that the aeronautical industry, Aerospace industry has been hit in a big way, especially in terms of movement of people as of today. Right? At the same time, of course, it is just a matter of 
time shift which has occurred people have not traveled and suddenly they will start traveling in a big way in the days to come in a total way some at the end of the year would be the same by and large people would have traveled but they will be here here to there but more importantly if you look at uh, the industry will bounce back in a big way but there is a major thinking which is going on in terms of fuel change See, all of us are used to the, the, the regular kerosene type of fuel which is used in the aircraft and that is the one which is running and we have seen the normal aeroplanes which are going to fly in a particular way with wings etc those things are going to change now there will be platforms which will come up which could take thousand people together that is a technology which is slowly being developed both with hybrid power and uh, both solar as well as the other power to take people as they are just imagine the whole campus which we are in is going to be shifted together to another location let us say a whole building of that particular people wherever they are seated like a restaurant the entire restaurant is going to fly over a period of time and then go and stop at one place those are the technologies which have already come in and being tested and those will take up at the same time the demand for the smaller aircraft is going to go up in a big way due to which there will be many many people who will basically reinvest into this particular sector for manufacturing especially earlier it was ruled by certain sectors or certain uh, players be it boeing or airbus and those are the people who are going to do or uh, uh, bombardier and so on and mercedes today now there will be players and who knows but uh, the way things are hl also could basically become a competitor to that particular kind of world and uh, i do foresee that there will be a major change which will come up in this particular technology and this is going to be disruptive and in all probability the existing type of aircraft will go away and the new type of aircraft will start flowing it is like a change over from landline to the mobile phone that is what is going to occur especially in the aircraft industry and let us be ready for that and i would invite especially the aeronautical students who are interested specifically to be in that particular field because it is a depth field it is not just a broad field it is a field of depth you need to be in aeronautical you need to go deeper into the aeronautical and avionics and then there is a lot of development which is happening both in avionics as well as in aeronautical to develop such kind of uh, feature which are going to basically keep the people safe around the world and then still make them travel safe and stay stay safe so i do see a bright future especially for that particular field also just like as in case of automobile as devraj has sir pointed out hybrid vehicles are going to come there hybrid flights are also going to be there in the days to come it is a need of the hour and whenever there is a need people are driven to the wall and they will perform and deliver and innovate Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Devraj, would you want to add something to uh, what Mr. Bhushan already mentioned? Uh, uh, Mr. Vijesh, I totally second what uh, Mr. Bhushan uh, said, and uh, he hardly he hardly left anything for me to speak. He covered almost all points. I only would like to say that the scope and demand for uh, aeronautical engineering has been ever increasing. Uh, COVID is just a small gap in between, and after that, it will continue in a in an exponential manner as it used to be earlier. and uh, there is no much uh, this one uh, slack kind of thing due to covid uh, in aeronautical engineering is concerned thank you thank you sir uh, so one I thing i wanted to add the number of airports which are coming up in india is a simple suggestion of the number of flights which are going to fly in india in the days to come you can name the cities which are smaller cities you know the adani group has basically building up the major airports the new airports which are coming up lot of tenders which have flown and uh, definitely if there is somebody who is going to develop like india indian company which is going to develop aircraft which are going to be worthy air worthy and safe and fine and people traveling is much more safer than uh, some group of people and then there is a possibility that this particular type of uh, business itself will evolve into a new kind of uh, business and today you have to go to airport you have to go there and take a ticket and then from there you need to fly some private players are having their own air base and then they are flying for example reliance organization is flying on their own so there is no need for them to go to airport and fly already between patala ganga to hazira to uh, jamnagar they fly on their own the whole employees have their own aircraft they do their own base and then they fly of course civil aviation is going to definitely change its landscape be ready for it thank you sir um, let me quickly bring in uh, sunita ma'am ma'am this is a question from a student who uh, the question is uh he wants to be a scientist he or she wants to be a scientist down the line um completing grade 12 this year could you please tell me the path that i should take to achieve my goal and become a scientist um since it's not mentioned what area or which domain is the student specific for, uh, about uh, you could answer uh, with uh, this um considering biotechnology as an expertise 
yeah uh, thank you vishish and it is a very uh, uh, a very good question because uh, the uh, see whatever we do uh, uh, as an undergraduate it should reach to the the goal what we want to have, have the dream okay so related to this uh, see the question is uh, to become a scientist uh, uh, her goal or he her her, her goal uh, his goal is uh, that yeah, biotechnology is one of the discipline it gives uh, uh, their dream to fulfill because it is the one which is uh, uh, we are working with the different areas and it is a vast area. It will lead to the different sectors also uh, like uh, it will go to uh, we can uh, uh, have the nanotechnology. Uh, food technology it is uh, widely diversified with uh, uh, different areas which is connected industrial biotechnology and uh, uh, we have uh, bioinformatics see if you look at uh, the, this um, so many areas come into this uh, under one discipline and uh, here we do uh, you know, have the different spectrum of the uh, research areas we can uh, have uh, here in this uh, field in this discipline uh, one is like uh, yeah one is uh, uh, the the uh, causes i mean uh, the problems what we are facing at globally here it is the overpopulation novel diseases habitat uh, dis uh, destruction and uh, we have uh, ocean health problem soil health problem lifestyle diseases and uh, often diseases food security pollution and over consumption of the food all these things if you look at it's all related to the uh, biotechnology and here uh, in this uh, course uh, we do learn the fundamentals of science i said it is the science and the technology built uh, together this uh, discipline comes out with the products which is useful for the healthy life of the living organisms so as it uh, say as i told here, here it is the current global issues so what will be the probable solutions we can find here it is the uh, we can find the crispr cas for the gene editing st study of the novel diseases and find out the diagnostic kits and green energy we can come out and biofuels as a renew uh, renewable energy uh, source for the the next demand is the renewable energy i mean uh, renewable energy is to be the concern okay and bioremediations and novel enzymes production of enzymes for the different uh, pro i mean for the efficient production such that it should reach to the particular uh, way of the uh, diseases to target okay and nanotechnology in Anyway, this will be the one of the leading uh, technology we are uh, uh, we are uh, imbibing in uh, most of the um, areas of the bioscience. So uh, bioinformatics to study the analytical, uh, I mean uh, to study the data, I mean uh, data, and also to come out the computational modeling for the uh, particular um, gene express or the particular DNA uh, uh, study of the DNA, uh, all these things. Okay. So if we're looking at all this uh, spectrum of the um, uh, the spectrum of the problems and the solutions, I think uh, uh, biotechnology fits a very good uh, uh, discipline for the to become a scientist and also it is a multi as we said it is an interdisciplinary one how this interdisciplinary it is connect to the biotechnology see as a bite um, this core science of the bio it is not it is it should be learned uh, from the uh, ug program so that we can connect to them in the masters and the uh, research as a phd program so we can connect to the uh, interdisciplinary course interdisciplinary areas like the way i said nanotechnology so but one thing is you have to we have to concern about the UG course if you learn the biotechnology then it is able to connect to the other fields is very easy but in vice versa okay so uh, here uh, my suggestion uh, is to uh, get into the uh, the essence of the biotechnology about the raw ingredients of the life and produce the maximum output to help the societal problems uh, related to this i can see that uh, the dream of the scientists can fulfill from the biotechnology discipline thank you
Thank you so much, ma'am. I think uh, that is a quite in-depth information about biotechnology and how to become a scientist uh, for a student aspiring to be in the field of biotechnology. Let me quickly bring in Arun. Um, Arun, there's a question from a student who wants to know what is the position of information technology and computer engineering in India? Which one is the better sector in India or is it the same? Okay. Um, well, Vishesha, uh, I must say uh, at this scenario, at this time, I say both are same, but we had that difference of IT and CS like this, you know, basically IT was all about uh, installing, maintaining, improving the computer systems, or operating networks. All these things were part of IT earlier. Now, computer science as a student, uh, they were basically using the mathematics to program system to run more efficiently. But now as a information science student and computer science students, we should be knowing how to deal with both the things. I should be a good programmer as well as I should be knowing how to work with the network also. It's not that I will be good only one in one aspect and other I'll not be. Because I just taken an example of saying uh, earlier we used to have a front end developers and back end developers. Now we have something called as a full stack developers. See, uh, what is full stack developer is basically he will be doing the front end job as well as the back end job. Right, so there is a database and there is a front end a website when I talk about a website. So how do I deal both? So if I'm master of both, then the survival will be better for me in my career. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arun, for that particular insight. Um, and I think there's a lot of students who are sometimes uh, confused. What is the uh, branch that you want to choose? Do you want to choose computer science, information technology, artificial intelligence? Students may start the question interested in connecting with our faculty one to one and asking them these questions. You're welcome to do so. Just leave us your uh, email ID and phone number, and we will connect you with respective uh, faculty uh, so that you can ask your questions to them and have clarity in terms of which is the stream of engineering that you want to choose. Um, Quickly, let me bring in uh, Professor Devraj Ayer. Uh, due to yeah. COVID pandemic, Indian development plans has affected more um, in the area of civil engineering. Do you think civil engineers will find jobs once um, uh, is this continues? Yeah, Mr. Vishesh, thank you. Yes, for sure, uh, civil engineers find uh, uh, jobs definitely because uh, these these pandemics or any other nat natural calamities in one in one or other forums keep hitting us uh, very frequently now on we should it's our job to be prepared to face them and to live with them looking at that perspective uh, you know there is an uh, there will be a never ending demand or a boost in demand for uh, safe and clean living atmospheres uh, living environments uh, this is very this is going to be very very important uh, yeah, uh, we need to have uh, roads and rails and the necessary infrastructure for uh, fast transportation. Uh, safe buildings uh, against uh, maybe an earthquake or against any natural calamities. Yes, they play a vital role now on. Locust buildings, yes, uh, to bring down the cost of buildings, locust buildings and the design of them is going to be very, very important. Uh, energy is another important domain uh, of civil engineers, uh, you know, uh, and again, uh, energy is a multidisciplinary domain with electrical engineers. Civil engineers also play a very, very vital role there. And very importantly, there will be a uh, there will be major uh, focus on agricultural technologies now onwards. Uh, certainly, civil engineers play a, a pivotal role, a very important role here in providing irrigation supports and uh, other things. Uh, sewage and water supply, yes, there will be a lot of uh, demand for civil engineering. So these all uh, domains definitely bring in uh, jobs uh, for civil engineers, uh, Mr. Vishesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, sir, uh, for that insight. I think um, whether there is an economy down or uh, uh, we don't just stop building roads, dams, and buildings. I think that's a very clear indicator of, about where civil engineering is heading to. Probably um, lavish constructions might stop, but that doesn't mean uh, the nation stops building. And I think that's 
quite an indicator for all engineering, civil engineering aspirants to know that it's one of the uh, most uh, sustaining field, if I may so, so, say so, that I think civil engineering would be a right uh, career choice. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Devrajay, do you want to add uh, something to that? Yeah, certainly. As the many panelists were pointing out, uh, it is certainly uh, interdisciplinary in nature. Uh, the line of demarcation between different disciplines of engineering are fast vanishing. Uh, many of the domains which I mentioned right now, uh, you know, be it uh, roads or rails, uh, for transportation, energy, they're all interdisciplinary with automobiles, as Mr. Bhushan was telling, uh, and uh, uh, irrigation support. Yes, many of these are interdisciplinary in nature. Civil engineers uh, definitely a part of uh, those uh, interdisciplinary aspects, uh, Mr. Vishesh. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me bring in uh, Mr. Bhushan once again, because it's a very generic question, but I thought it's a very, very interesting question. Uh, we have a student who is an aspirant uh, who wants to become an IAS officer, uh, but he also wants to be uh, an engineer as well. Um, he says, how can it help uh, to do engineering for him to reach his goal? What are your thoughts? Sir? OK, great. In fact, I have been meeting due to my role, which I'm playing in the institute, which you are aware. I have been meeting IAS officers from last, last several uh, decades uh, from in my various positions. And I have seen engineers who have become IAS officers. I have seen doctors who have become IAS officers. I have seen graduates, general graduates who have become IAS officers. Interestingly, an IAS officer is a leader. IAS officer is an administrator. And he needs to be decisive or she needs to be decisive in approach. Needs to be knowledgeable, hardworking, honest. Okay, and excellent communication skill and out of the box thinking. These are the normal attributes of an IAS officer. But at the same time, an engineer adds something to it. He adds a flavor into it. It is like an engineer becoming an IAS officer is exactly like uh, what you say, like we have uh, uh, badam milk where the badam has entered, right? So that is how it would be. So he brings in a particular quality to this particular position wherein the problem solving attitude becomes much bigger. Those people, I'll just tell you, there is one engineer, Mr. Chandrasekhar, uh, who basically was holding the position of Nagpur. Nagpur IAS officer, the commissioner, uh, 15 years back, he held that particular position. And before he came in that particular place, there have been many IAS officers, there have been many government. And he as an engineer, when he came into that particular position, if you visit Nagpur after his five years stint there, you could see a marvelous change which he has brought in, which nobody could have been able to do it just because he understood as and when he traveled around the city, around the whole place, he saw problems. And he saw, he knew that there are problems and that problems need to be solved. He's an appetite for an engineer. And I would welcome a student who is interested in going ahead with this particular type of a position. Engineers have always succeeded, especially when they are IS officers. And they have been able to do very well in terms of problem solving and contribute for the people. And even in Hyderabad also, there was an IS officer. Of course, uh, Chandra Babu Nadu sir will basically take the credit for all the development as a government. But he put the right kind of engineer into the Hyderabad. And most of the IS officers who came there at that particular period of time were previous engineers. And they could solve many problems together, be it electrical, be it uh, civil engineering, be it uh, even uh, irrigation. Irrigation projects which got developed just now, Devarajaya sir was touching upon the irrigation projects which came up. Water is somewhere else in this particular country and the resources are elsewhere and the consumers are elsewhere and then there is a demand elsewhere. And if we need to make sure that the lift irrigation projects are basically brought up and then created, today we are trying to do certain Ethirhole project in Karnataka, certain uh, uh, projects which have been done in uh, Andhra Pradesh, all are due to IS officers who were civil engineers. I welcome you to become an IS officer by being in civil, by being any one of the domains which you would like to enter into as an uh, engineer. Thank you, uh, Professor Bhushan. I think uh, more and more aspirants should actually look at uh, becoming part of the nation building process. And I think being an engineer and getting into the fraternity of IAS, I think is one uh, sure way of uh, contributing uh, to your uh, country and uh, help build you know, latest things around you so that you can help the people around you. 
Um, bringing in Rajeshree, ma'am, um, there's a specific question. Uh, but before the question, let me quickly announce to all our audience, uh, I would be taking three more questions, three more questions because, because we're running short of time now. Um, so quickly put in your questions. We'll pick and choose the best ones and ask the panelists. Please do add their names if you have a specific uh, panelist for me to ask a question to. Um, Rajeshree, ma'am, coming back to you. Yes. What are the new age careers in engineering that would open up post-COVID? Um, I would want to add a question of mine into it. Uh, let me also look at it in this way. What are the careers that would uh, be sustaining a post-COVID? I mean, uh, there are two ways of looking at it in, in terms of the current uh, scenario and also the scenario post-COVID. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vishesh. Uh, I'll take uh, a minute or more than a minute, at least two minutes for this to answer. Okay. Post-COVID, uh, I see uh, the opportunities in these verticals. First, I call healthcare. Uh, under healthcare, be it wearable devices, be it the new technologies to uh, monitor and control, uh, be it uh, uh, the digital connect to monitor the patients, the telemedicine, which will, going to, which will definitely boom. Okay. So in healthcare, I see these wearable devices. I look at uh, digital control and monitoring of the uh, patients, telemedicine and uh, 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 a sort of uh, a digital connect with the hospitals, the patients, the common man at a low cost. OK, and I don't I don't see wearables at a high cost, like a Fitbit watch costing 40, 40,000. I look at uh, wearable devices now as an opportunity at a cost of a co common of around uh, 2.5 K uh, for reaching common man, which will take care of my complete health uh, control. Okay, so this I look at healthcare. Uh, coming to uh, the next sector is my agri sector. If I put my uh, priorities, okay. So the next one is agri sector. Uh, we have seen the situation in the last two months regarding the agriculture. The farmers just dumping their uh, uh, produce in the uh, fields, just uh, uh, sacking it out. I, uh, if I look at it like this, I can see my engineers tomorrow coming up with uh, uh, picking up uh, two, three villages, uh, getting into a cold storage unit developed by themselves, an indigenous cold storage unit developed by uh, a batch of my students coming out after four years, picking up five villages and uh, seeing that the crops, the grains, the vegetables, the fruits, everything is put into when there is a good uh, market value. Uh, I support my farmers and I'm benefited. This is one example in agriculture sector. Not only that, how I reach my farmers with the digital world, even though the farmer is an illiterate, how I connect to him, how I bring his uh, produce to the market directly reaching the mankind. I have seen my own friends connecting to farmers in villages in Nelamangla or in Hesargatta, picking up the uh, produce by them and connecting directly to the common person. And it's benefiting. And uh, during this COVID time in the last two months, I have uh, on a real time basis seen how the farmers are benefited which we have not broadcasted i think so okay so that is my second uh, uh, vertical in the agriculture developing uh, uh, indigenous products for uh, uh, sowing for tilling for uh, taking care of the uh, reaping of all those indigenous products developed by the uh, graduates i see the second one as the most promising one is the manufacturing manufacturing sector the manufacturing sector in case of automotives, the manufacturing sector in case of uh, um, uh, be it uh, not only the automotive parts, it is the manufacturing sector in case of uh, the mechanical components, the uh, materials which is coming into picture, the nanomaterials, the smart materials. Uh, Devraj sir was talking about the aero industries. Sir, to add for that also, the materials today for the aero industry is the booming sector in uh, aeronautical engineering. So I see a, a good spectrum of opportunity in that area also. Above all these, I see the digital platform, which is emerging a lot now. There is a lot of opportunity in the digital platform, be it the IoT, be it the intelligent systems. The intelligent systems today is not only confined to uh, a particular device. It is confined even to a day-to-day -day, day basis of our own uh, lifestyle today. OK, so these are the promising sectors. What I see basically it's device development. I see the manufacturing sector and I see the uh, digital world today. OK, and the last one, I, I just also spoke about the 5G. The complete environment today will have to move towards 5G. To move towards 5G, there is a lot of hardware development, protocols development, software development 
which will be a career opportunity to all our engineers. That's it, Vishesh. Uh, thank you, uh, ma'am. I think I couldn't agree uh, more with you. Uh, I think uh, the way technology has transformed in the last five years, um, and I think if you go um, before 2000s, the, the, the spread at which the, or, the, or the speed at which the technology has grown has become exponential. What took 100 years, for example, a telephone took 86 years to reach 1 billion circulation, but whereas a game called Pokemon Go took three days to reach one billion people. I think this, that's the speed at which technology are going. I think and millennials are also catching up to that particular speed. I see uh, the Professor Devrajaya wanting to add something to what uh, Professor Rajeshri has just mentioned. Uh, Professor Devrajaya, kindly switch on your mic. I think your mic is turned off. Thank you. Uh, appending uh, to what uh, Rajeshri spoke, yeah, we are in an era of uh, exploring you know, latest horizons of uh, material science and engineering. We uh, we are uh, designing materials at our wish. Materials, uh, material engineering is going to be uh, being a part of mechanical engineering. It, it is going to play a very vital role. Coming to manufacturing aspects as what she was uh, telling, uh, definitely uh, newer technologies like uh, additive manufacturing and uh, popularly called as 3D printing is playing a very, very important role these days. Uh, yeah. With very, uh, very little wastage of materials, raw materials, we are, uh, we are, we are able to produce products uh, uh, at uh, a very rapid pace and uh, with very little wastage of raw materials. Uh, I just wanted to add those two things to what uh, Professor Rajeshwari spoke. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you so much and for that. Think, uh... Hello. Yes. Somebody wants to come in. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add some more points regarding to this manufacturing of the products. Uh, here, uh, the biopolymers is one of the leading one. It is going to uh, fetch the market and the nano uh, nano products. So uh, currently, we are also working on some of the projects in our department, like um, the now after the I mean in the COVID-19 effect. So the lot of uh, the products is needed for the common people and should be reachable. So oh, regarding to that, we are working on the nan, I mean, uh, nano with the bio uh, polymer based mask. We are coming out uh, shortly. And also we are also working on synthetic cotton. What Devrajaya sir, sir said, we're also building up the, the natural products with respect to the synthetic uh, products such that it is going to use and re uh, recycling. It will be easy and also it will be like a, it will be easy to carry. See, we have the, some domain courses in our department uh, we are conducting. One is called pocket diagnostics. Uh, and um, here in the pocket diagnostics, we are going to uh, teach the, it is a skill based uh, domain programs we are conducting. Based on that, uh, so here it is a. Just hold on your thought there because there is a question specifically coming to the skills and domains. Um, okay, there is a question from. And so I think uh, each. Uh, Department wise, I would want to take your opinions in terms of how you're adding domain skills and things like that. Sure, but sure. specifically my question. Um, in fact, the next question is addressed to uh, Professor Rajeshwari, but I would want to bring in all the panelists, uh, uh, beginning with uh, Professor Rajeshwari. The question is being a millennial, our generation looks into sustainable ecosystem. Does curriculum help engineers explore sustainable development or are the activities within the colleges that will help us achieve the same efficiently? I think. Uh, I think the parent who's asked this question or a student who's asked this question, I think a big round of applause to you for asking such a question. I think everybody is specifically looking at uh, careers and uh, you know what to choose and things like that. Uh, somebody who's looking at an overall ecosystem in terms of development of a student, I think your, your thought process is absolutely right. And hence, um, this question, I think, is the question of the day. And I'll, I'll take input from all the panelists. Let me start with you, ma'am. Uh, if you could um, uh, specifically address um, the sustainable part of academics uh, when it comes to uh, engineering. Fine. OK, uh, today my uh, I have put my word to an engineering course, let us assume. OK, I want to see uh, at the end of the fourth year, can he uh, stand as an engineer? OK, so this is the question what I uh, uh, I have understood. OK, now uh, I go like this. Uh, my first year, first year of engineering is uh, building my uh, fundamental core uh, science subjects and 
looking into the uh, opportunities or in which domain i have to move okay so i spent my first year with my core uh, uh, basic fundamental science subjects now coming on to the second year uh, second year onwards i need to start looking at a broader uh, a bandwidth of uh, education now how i do like this is and the curriculum what we are today is also benefiting i'll just look into the second year onwards uh the second year i look into a particular domain for example let me say i want to be a chief design engineer uh, tomorrow after four years so what i what is my role in my uh, second year is as a student i'm talking as a student i'm talking in the second year i need to look at the subjects which are strong or which are correlated with the chief design so into that particular subjects i need to dwell deeper i need to dwell deeper means i need to take up small mini projects i need to take up uh, additional courses supported by the college we do have a coursera connect we do have a nodal center of nptel in our own institution fine so what i do is as a student i need to take up courses related to a chip design the fundamental courses i cannot get into a high end course in the second year i pick up additional courses along with my core second year subjects i go in deeper i build a strong phase uh, base in the second year with my institutional support okay in the third year in the third year i pick up my electives i pick up electives in such a way that it matches to my chip design or if i want to build an intelligent chip and then i pick up uh, courses related to artificial intelligence i pick up courses with respect to vlsi uh, low power vlsi related related to these i pick up the courses okay now i start uh, uh, pinging at uh, doing my projects and putting it up on to the portal wherein the industry looks at me i put it up on to an industries which looks into me there is an open platform if the most of the parents are aware of i put it i put all my works or my learnings along with my faculty on to a github link the industry watches me picks me for an intern in the third year i i enter into intel or i enter into nvidia or i enter in i'm talking about the chip design engineer alone okay so i enter as an intern i need not go to the industry all the days i sit in my own uh, hostel or in my own home or my place i start working with the day to day projects given by the uh, organization as an intern along with my subjects okay and my electives also are suffixing the third year i finish my intern i finish my project fourth year i directly get into a live project with the industry provided i have done this homework with the support of my faculty and the uh, other uh, allied courses appended be the nptel courses the coursera courses the coursera not only gives a course it also gives projects to be done with the help or the support of the institution okay so my fourth year becomes a live project i land up as a chip design engineer tomorrow this is what uh, uh, i need to grow as a path the parents also need to know it's not only the cgpa which is going to count today it relies on two one is the skills developed and the other is be grounded these two parameters uh, makes me a sustained engineer tomorrow whatever it is whether i take up a job or i am an entrepreneur tomorrow okay yeah uh, thank you thank you ma'am hello uh, ma'am i want to yeah. bring in uh, uh, professor bhushan here when we talking about sustainability uh, especially in the academic um, uh, sector we talk about industries quite a lot uh, professor bhushan uh, how does how does your department specifically uh, engage the industries in creating an academic um, sustainable model when when it comes to curriculum development good uh, after all what is sustainable development a sustainable development is the one which meet, meets the meets the present requirement say for example they need to produce something which is required for the present community right we will produce that particular uh, requirement but it will not compromise the ability of the future generations which are going to come in the days to come and their needs will not suffer just because we consumed it for example we have extracted gold in every part of the world right due to which let us say the gold is not available in future basically for the development of the people it's all sitting in the houses so due to which it cannot be put in the mobile phones it cannot be put in the chips due to which the price of the gold goes up and the millennials over a period of time have to pay huge money basically for their mobile phones which would not have been the case if the gold which is sitting from generations to generations is sitting in various houses 
or various uh, countries or wherever so it is not a sustainable way of development so whenever a particular activity which happens around us for example cobalt cobalt has been basically developed initially and used across for various coloring purposes in paint or for the carter even in uh, ornaments or even uh, uh, households suddenly there is a shortage of cobalt cobalt prices have gone to huge roof right the reason is simple basically because it has been all acquired and then particular group of people are uh, controlling the whole world it is a product which is available given by the god for the benefit of the entire mankind and nothing has been basically given only for some group of people or so on be it copper be it gold be it any or sort of material or anything which is basically available around us and the nature the ecosystem right so the question is related to that if i look into that angle and try to see the curriculum by and large has been looked at of course sustainability came up in the two decades before and in 97 onwards sustainability came up so since then it has been going up in a big way and uh, taken a huge shape and uh, reformed itself and uh, come up according to the organization each okay, organization basically want to, uh, yeah. here i would want to uh, possibly uh, the idea of uh, Achara Institute of Technology, I think, uh, connecting with industries like Mahindra and Mahindra, Saskin and Vasundra Automation. Um, uh, if you could uh, detail a little more into that, because I think industries are playing a larger area in terms of how uh, you could uh, build parallel curriculum to what a university system is, so that students can take advantage of both ends of the world. So could you just highlight of your industry collaborations a little? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. If I, if I take that particular part of it, each of these industry today have a requirement and then there is a change in technology which is they have adopted in order to meet the market demand. But the progression which happens especially in the academics will not be exactly at the same pace because there is a particular batch which goes out four to five years and so on. So keeping in view of that, the industry relationships which we have developed in each of that, I think a number of MOUs are there with many, many industries and some of them participate physically being available inside the campus. And then we have built up a good amount of uh, courses which are required wherein the students could, together with the partners of industry, we learn certain activities and uh, together are time relevant, especially for the industry needs. And that is how we make sure that we are sustainable in the whole process. And in fact, we have several such companies which have come forward to us and we have more of them in the years to come. In all Thank the you, sir. Uh, I think Sunita Madam earlier was talking yeah. about double skills programs uh, that is beyond the curriculum. Ma'am, since we are running out of time, could you uh, straight away come and uh, mention uh, which are the areas that you do um, develop students on in your particular department? Yeah, I, I, a very short uh, way of uh, uh, briefing the whole de department activities. Okay, so here in the first uh, once the uh, in the second year the students come to the department. Uh, we broadly uh, because in the biotechnology the students most of the students opt for the research and uh, uh, some of the students go for the placement. So we broadly find out uh, who are their interest uh, interest of area in the future uh, uh, their career. So we will take based on that. Uh, we will give the uh, the uh, the domain uh, uh, knowledge for them and uh, here if they the students are in the uh, in the ba in the base of research if they are interested then uh, we'll put them from the second year onwards uh, we'll teach the some of the skills for the required for the research activities and then uh, they will get into the live projects what we have in the industry consultancy projects we have and uh, funded projects we have so we put them into the those projects and uh, by the time when they come out from as a uh, engineering engineers so they all uh, uh, come out with the uh, the fruitful of the or uh, the all round of the uh, demand like uh, they did they do, I mean, uh, they do the publications curriculum, you also bring in industry and domains as well as uh, all yeah. hands-on learning for students to develop i think that's very interesting man let me and quickly bring uh, Professor yeah. Bhagirathi uh, in terms of understanding what does mechatronics department do because you are an interdisciplinary department already. Uh, so what do you do for students who are looking at uh, uh, you know sustainable growth beyond your regular university curriculum? Okay, uh, in our department, when the student enter in first year, actually they study all these basic uh, science subjects. So as soon when they enter into the department, that is from the second year onwards. So uh, we start with all the basic uh, 
apart from whatever there is the cur curriculum so we do start training uh, about the different courses and uh, we have uh, different uh, industry members in our uh, institute board also and we do take the inputs from them what is the industry requirement along with that we do a survey also of the individual student since mechatronics is an interdisciplinary so as i told you the students can opt for any vertical of their engineering discipline after they graduate so they may come as a mechatronics uh, student but after the graduating they may get interest towards the mechanical field or only the embedded field or robotics field or an automation field so for different each vertical the different uh, type of training has to be given for them so we sort out all the uh, list of the students who want to get into different verticals and we make a list of whatever the courses we have to offer and in what way we can train them and in the next uh, uh, year onwards we start with the, the mini projects in the respective field of whatever they have interested in and our students also go to an internship for an industry as well as they also go to the university abroad to take up their internship courses there so uh, that, that again yes sir uh, uh, quickly uh, since we are running short of time i think it's sort of okay. got the framework of uh, how your department operates there uh, yes, let me yes. just quickly bring in professor devraj here sir um, the being a dean academic i think you interact with a lot of first year students and i think that is one year where students are absolutely confused in terms of what to do what not to do i'm sure they have heard this webinar and they've had attended a quite a few webinars like this or talk to their neighbors friends before making a decision but in the first year when they come in what is the value add support that uh, you ensure that the students get in terms of uh, building their careers in engineering specifically the first years so please turn on your mic yeah yeah, yeah. we we keep in mind that uh, the students uh, come here we uh, we get a lot of creative and uh, you know uh, energetic uh, young students with plus 2 uh, level uh, entering our college at the first year level yeah once they enter you know uh, uh, we do have a proctorial uh, system in uh, practice and uh, uh, with the help of those uh, that system uh, a professor deeply gets into the psychological aspects the interests dislikes everything of a student and slowly builds a profile of a student and then based on his or her interests uh, we you know encourage student to take up uh, you know uh, activities in different domains maybe uh, technical seminars maybe uh, projects maybe mini projects maybe uh, discussion technical discussions anything of their choice not only relevant not only uh, we do not limit the students only to curriculum okay uh, besides that we strongly encourage and advocate uh, you know multidisciplinary projects mini projects at different levels uh, starting from the first year we have seen uh, amazing uh, work done by many of our first year students uh, in different disciplines uh, they are bringing laurels to the institute and uh, they are uh, very interacting and their inclination towards social connect is very very interesting very uh, impressive and we develop we encourage uh, and we develop uh, that uh, attitude of them and uh, uh, yeah uh, that's what thing that so that you understand the psychological aspect of the student understand their likes dislikes and then you help them build a career uh, based on that uh, let me quickly bring in um, uh, professor arun arun if you are there um, uh, what are your uh, departmental um, co curricular activities do you, do you have uh, clubs and other initiatives which help students to do something hands on what they apply in classrooms uh wonderful yeah which is we do have a lot of uh, co-curricular activities uh, take place in our department. We have a forum called as a Steigen. A Steigen is basically a word uh, which means the raising, right? Uh, this is a forum where it will help students to learn different things uh, apart from the regular curriculum uh, syllabus. So uh, in a timetable, every week, a uh, two to three hour slot is given where students come out with the innovative ideas uh, we will have a discussion discussions quiz technical competitions all these things will happen beyond our regular syllabus so this one forum will definitely help the students to uh, uh, 
learn how to manage the things see it is not the forum only uh, about grooming students with respect to technology it is also about how to take the leadership how to handle the uh, 60 80 100 students because you are organizing an event so when you are organizing an event automatically your leadership qualities comes out right all these aspects definitely help the students so this is one forum uh, which we have which will help the students to groom uh, themselves better thank you so much arun uh, we are almost completely out of time but before uh, we close uh, for today uh, professor rajeshwari there is a uh, 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 a uh, very senior parent who has mentioned uh, a comment i think we have to proceed towards research oriented and real life engineering problems rather than syllabus oriented programs because i guess this would induce dynamic engineers rather than just an engineer uh, uh, with this closing comments we would want to close the session professor rajeshwari would you want to add to what the parent has mentioned yes 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 i appreciate uh, the intellect of the parent right uh, uh, see, even I am a parent of a son who is doing his engineering, right? I look at engineering as uh, not a mere academic. I look at engineering as a project-based learning. I decide what should be my career path. I decide what is my domain I have to get into. I decide I need to join uh, this particular sector of the industry. For that, I look at project-based learning an experiential learning rather than only academics, okay? I need to blend my academics along with a, a learning uh, which will not only enhance my skills, which will also make me visible to the outer world. Outer world, I say, it can be the research labs, it can be the industry, okay? So I need to do my engineering along with the institution and the industry or the research lab. This should be the education system. This is what I put forth. Vishesh, that is my answer. Yes. I need yes. to do my engineering along with the institution, any R&D lab or an industry together. It cannot be after four years, I will join an industry. No, I need to do my engineering today along with an in industry, my institution and an R&D lab if permitted. Okay, so to do this, I need to put to do this, I need to put in an extra mileage. I need to put in my efforts to do a project based learning with my faculty and my organization yes Vishesh. Uh, and I, Acharya, I, think, we this. I think the latest uh, i was about to add that i think at acharya how you have uh, imbibed internships into your curriculum i think is what uh, will take uh, the hands-on learning yes. forward um thank you Vishesh. so much ladies and gentlemen we have come to yeah. a close of our session but before i leave i would want each one of your, our panelists to uh, end it uh, by uh, a line that they want to give it out to the students and parents. Let me start with Professor Bhagirathi, if you want to add something to what you have said. One line, please, because we're really short of time now. Ma'am, please unmute, unmute your mic, please. I think we have a technical issue. Let me just quickly bring in Dr. Sunita uh, in the meanwhile. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Vishesh. Uh, uh, as you said uh, about the one line. So I just want to say for the biotechnology discipline, we should uh, uh, go with a skill based uh, uh, learning, whatever the syllabus we study, you should have the practical experience. And then only we can come out with the uh, uh, good products for the, uh, the social issues. So I so believe much, in skill based training with the uh, course completion. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Professor Devrajaya, your last input for the day. Yeah, uh, dear students and uh, parents who are uh, in this webinar, uh, students especially, please chase your dreams, whichever branch or whichever discipline of engineering you choose, uh, you know, work very hard and don't worry about placements. Placements uh, will happen, we, you will get jobs, but you grow in such a manner that you deserve jobs. It will definitely help you a lot. Work very hard. Use your four years very wisely. Definitely, it will help, and uh, you will your career will be bright. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me quickly bring in Arun. Arun, uh, what are your last thoughts, please? Uh, if a student has chosen a computer science, I say that uh, where in a course of four years, he will be learning seven to eight different languages. I uh, request all the students to have the fundamentals very strong because if the foundation is not good, 
then uh, what a beautiful house if you want to construct also it is not possible so have the fundamental knowledge of any language what you learn uh, to the core you know that is very important having fundamentals very strong thank you vishesh thank you uh, arun uh, pagirthi ma'am if you can hear me uh, what are your last thoughts if your mic is turned on now yes sir uh, sorry there was a technical issue so what i would like to say is uh, whether it is an electronics engineering or aeronautical automobile or any discipline so uh, the, i guess the students has to first uh, make up uh, their mind what is their dream what is their future i guess they should go in line with that not they should not uh, go with anyone uh, uh, anyone else suggestion because we do come across so many students they just join out of their interest so what i want to suggest to the students and the parents is please students you have to have your own interest please plan your future please succeed towards the uh, succeeding towards the achieving your dream thank you i think that's it. nothing greater than passion um professor bushan uh, is that that's something that you want to add i would like to say if any one of you are interested to have a contented career and over a period of night you would like to sleep well thinking that you have contributed for the mankind and be satisfied with that particular thought and for that you would like to learn engineering acharya is the place come here we will not just teach, teach you engineering we will also teach you life skills welcome thank you so much uh, professor poshan uh, last words rajesh prima yeah boys and girls uh, i know you are aspirant but uh, let's muzzle our skills let us stay grounded let us see what's happening in the society let us contribute let us enhance our skills and contribute to the society at large thank you and all the best to all of you thank you thank you so much uh, the lovely panelists that we have had today uh, professor bhushan professor devrajaya professor arun uh, professor bagirathi professor sunita and finally professor rajeshwari uh, you've been wonderful and i'm sure there's a lot of questions that are still coming in uh, parents and students you will take these questions uh, if you have mentioned your um, specific panelists to answer we would send these questions to you uh, to them and you will receive the replies from them as well as long as we have uh, you have mentioned your emails you also have the option of connecting one to one with any of our panelists if you are interested please do leave us your name and number and or your email uh, and they would be glad to assist you in the particular process thank you once again good evening stay safe and stay home we are signing out of episode 2 of building your careers thank you so much thank, thank you. you vishesh thank you very much thank you thank you all thank you thank you all panelists Thank you thank you all of you